Hey all, welcome back to my channel. So in today's session, we are going to talk about the Verilog code of FSM. So in the previous session, we have already discussed about what is FSM and how are we going to draw a state diagram and extract the state table from the sequence. Okay, so for that same sequence, we are going to write a Verilog code today. Okay, if and uh, if you didn't see that particular video on how we are going to extract the state table and the state diagram from the sequence okay i link that in the description box you can go check it out there and if you are not familiar with fsm you first check that video and come here and also if you are familiar with uh, fsm uh, it's fine you can just check on to this video of writing a code okay for fsm in very long right so what are we going to do today is we are going to write the test bench uh, sorry rtl as well as test bench for fsm okay so let us not waste any more time right so also if you are new to my channel consider subscribing my channel and hit on the notification bell also also follow me on all my social media handles and if you are having any doubts you can join my telegram channel and you can ask any doubts there also you can ping me in any of my social media handles like linkedin and all already so many of you are asking doubts in linkedin okay it's fine for me in any of the social media handles but if you are having any doubt you can ask me for me anywhere right so in today's video we are going to talk about fsm right so as i told you in the yesterday's video we have already drawn a state table and state diagram for this okay so by using that state table we are going to draw the uh, particular uh, we are going to write the code today so what is the take uh, sequence that we have taken yesterday that is 1010 is my sequence okay so for that we have drawn the state table right so what are the states that we have taken we have taken a b c and d and based on the x value which is x is equal to 0 or 1 okay the output and next values is way changing so if x equal to 0 then a will be in the a position or else it will be in b similarly if it is 0 then it will be in c and if it is 1 it will be in d position only similarly if this is c is 1 then it will be going to d or else it will be again moving to a position okay a state and if it is d if at d if it is x equal to 0 then it will be going to the a state or else it will be going to the b state okay and coming to the output here everything are 0 except at the d position when x is 0 okay then only the output will be 1 for remaining all things the output will be 0 so this is my particular state diagram for that particular sequence 1010 in melee okay melee and it is non overlapping case okay for overlapping case the entire state diagram is same except that here it will be instead of a it will be going to c okay since it is overlapping okay this c will be for overlapping and if it is non overlapping then it is a fine so this is the state table for that particular sequence that we have extracted from the sequence 1010 for melee fsm okay so when going to when we are writing a code for this okay so module sequence a module any sequence detector name okay so what are the inputs if you see here clock okay reset because in order to make it activate and in order to based on the clock only the sequence will be detected so clock reset and if you see here x is the input okay and the output is named as z right so the z is the output and here we are taking four parameters right a b c d since here if you see these a b c d are the states okay these are neither inputs nor outputs okay so these are just like constants okay if you are familiar with parameters you know that parameters are nothing but they are the constant values which will be described within the module okay once you have declared the parameter then it will be globally worked for your entire code in your program and if you want to place the value or if you want to 
uh, like uh, override the value of the parameter you could only do it by using the def param keyword okay i'll also explain about parameters in the next session if you are not uh, familiar with parameters you can go check it uh, while i uh, uh, explain about the parameters okay but as for now remember that parameters are just like constants okay right so since there are neither inputs nor outputs we have mentioned if you see here clock reset and x are inputs z is output but we are declaring the states which are neither inputs nor outputs so we are declaring them as constants um, but for declaring the constants what can we do in the very log we can use the parameter okay so a b c d are my parameters and i am declaring some values for this parameters okay like which is hexadecimal format and 4 tick okay 4 tick h 1 2 3 4 are these values for this parameters a b c and d okay and then i am taking okay some bits what is it that is state okay present state or state both are same okay either ps or state right either ns or next state so i am taking these two as because by using this table only we are going to write our code so we should take this states okay present state which is state okay and then next state and both are of four bit wide okay clear yes now i am writing my code always at the rate positive of clock or negative of reset that means in order to detect this sequence okay we are going to write our code so how should the sequence where as we already as i already told you that the sequence will be working on based on the clock okay so that is why we are activating our clock and reset here so always at the rate positive of clock or negative of reset okay so you already know whatever we are going to write the uh, sensitivity list within the always uh, block based on the sensitivity list only the always block will be activated so this always block will be activated whenever there is change in clock or else negative of reset that means whenever the clock is in positive edge or reset is in negative edge then only this block will be activated okay what have i written in this i have written some conditional statements if you see if not reset n that means here what is this if reset uh, in the previous class i have already told you okay when you are getting giving the reset then all will be uh, having the default values and the sequence will be starting as soon as you are giving the reset so that is why if you are not giving any reset it will be staying in that particular position a only okay it won't be moving to the next stage until you are giving it a activating the reset so if a uh, reset is not activated then the state will be remaining in a okay if reset else okay begin and end okay and then else if not reset that means if reset is activated then it will be moving to the next state okay clear yes this is how you will be activating your the reset and clocks and then coming to the next block so always at the rate so how the changes how the um, changes will be taken place like how the movement will be done from one play, one state on the state how a will be going to be b will be going to c and c will be going to d based on the bits is it or not based on x values so always at the rate x or state okay that means what is the state what is the present state so based on the present state that means here if it is in a then it will be moving to b if it is in b then it will be moving to some a or d again so based on the present state and x we should be writing our code okay now always at the rate state or x begin right so case of state okay so what am i doing here i am writing a case statement okay for this case statement what am i taking i am taking the state okay so what is the state here a b c d so these are my states so whenever a is activated so depending upon the input values the change will be taken place so case of state right a right so a what is the condition that i am writing in a begin okay if x equal to 0 okay the next state will be 
A. Okay. Else it is B. Okay. Next state will be B. Similarly for B. That means this for this state I am writing this condition. For the second state B. See if X equal to 0. Next state is C. Else next. Similarly we will be writing for another two also. Have you seen this? If x equal to 0, this else. Next state is D. Similarly for D. If x equal to 0, next state is A. Else next equal to B. Here, if you see I have given some comment here. If you are reading this, this state only differs when compared with Omelia overlapping machine. Okay. That means in case of non-overlapping here, the next state will be coming for A. Okay. But in case of... Uh, in case of this, if you see here, in case of overlapping, it will be going to C. Okay, so that means what happens? Here in case of this, you will be going for C. Okay, default next state equal to A. Okay, these are the four cases. Else, if nothing of this will be true, then the default case will be activated, which is it will be only in that present state, which is A. Okay, so this is how you will be writing the case. So, now what happens based on the state that you are giving, like based on the input, so either of these four cases will be activated. Any one of these cases will be activated and based on that, the logic will be going to work out. Okay, now coming to output. Okay, we have returned for, if you see, we have activated the clock and then we have returned the logic. Now coming for output. So, what is the, when the output will be activated, when the output is 1 here, at the D state, okay, when x equal to A and when at x equal to 0, if this is A and B and also at this stage, at x equal to 0, it will be 1. So, based on that, you will be writing this logic. If you see here, assign, okay, this is the data flow modeling. And if you see, you can use both data flow modeling as well as behavior modeling, everything in one code. But what you should do is be after ending the after ending one one kind of modeling only you can start another kind. Okay, that means after ending the behavioral modeling, then you can go for data flow modeling. But you can't mix match before ending. You can't as you can't write this uh, particular. Uh, statement here if you are writing this particular statement before ending the behavioral then it will throw you error clear like assign z so what is the state there a state at state equal to d if you see here this is my conditional statement conditional operator okay so i am writing the conditional operator here what is my conditional operator state equal to d so until and unless these two statements are active uh, true then only output will be 1 so what are the two statements state should be equal to d and x should be equal to 0 why because if you see the thing here here state equal to d and at x equal to 0 then only the output is 1 right so based on that you are assigning so if these two are true then it will be output will be 1 else it is false okay so you have written the rtl logic for this now, in the test bench, you already know, test bench is just used to pass the values. So, module TB, again, whatever you are mentioning as inputs are given as rich and output is mentioned as wire, okay. And then this is instantiation, okay. After instantiating, you are activating the clock, okay. Initially, clock value, you have default set it to 0 and then always hash 5 clock equal to. That means here the clock period, the total clock period is 10. Okay, 10 time units. So, for 10 time units, you are creating the clock here and then initial begin x equal to 0. That means initially you have defaultly you have created the value of x as 0 and then you have activated the reset at 2 time units like reset n equal to 1. You have say after activating the reset only, your sequence will be starting to detect. So, then for, uh, for every time unit after giving some delay, okay, some constant delay, you are passing the values. So, in that means you are passing like 1, 1, 0, 1, yes, 0, 1, 0. This is the sequence that you are passing, okay, like 0, 1, 1, 1. This is how you will be passing the values, okay. And after passing some string of values, you will be giving the dollar finish and end, okay, and then 
within this initial and begin you will be in order to see the waveforms in the EDA playground you have to use this file dump file we will call this as dump file okay if you want to see the actually when we are executing it in the EDA playground you will be seeing in the log file you will be seeing the output in the text format but if you want to see it in the waveforms format you should be using this two statements like dump file we dump CD okay dump files okay so this is how you will be writing your code okay this is the test bench rtl and test bench code for this okay so in the next class or in some other class i try to execute this fsm on the eda playground because many of you are complaining me like uh, commenting me that uh, on the eda playground you can't see the code clearly so that is why i thought of uh, clearly explaining this fsm code um, to you on some other platform instead of eda playground so that it could be easily visible for you so that is why and also I want to explain it to you in parallel with the state uh, diagram sorry state table so that is why based on the state table only if you write the program it will be easily understood for you and also you won't forget it easily if you are uh, comparing it parallelly as well as writing the code so because of this thought only I have taken uh, this on the word uh, and I try to explain it to you in the word document so that uh, by seeing the state diagram if you write the code it will be easy for you Okay, hope this video is helpful for you and if you like this video, please like it, share and comment and also if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you.